Hello students, this is Joe. With this video today, I'm going to cover Chapter 5, Basic Cryptography. As usual, on the right hand side, I put up a one page summary of our Chapter 5. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the introductions. In our today, uh, cyber world, uh, we have to protect our data and information through multi level approach, including physical and technical. As we cover our physical protections in our past chapters, okay. Now, today we're going to learn our second level protection, which is to protect our information through encryptions. That means, although when the attackers receive our data, it can be changed or it can be viewed because of its being encrypted. Okay, let's define what is cryptography. Is a science of transforming our information or data into a secure form so that an authorized person cannot access it. Okay, another way of uh, cryptography is called stenography, which is to hide the existence of data. Okay, our image, audio, and video files contain hidden messages embedded in the file. It can, it can be archived by dividing data and hiding it in the unused portions of the file. Let's look at the example. This is a, a typical uh, image file, which is a Liberty statue, the image file here. I can hide my message into the end use segment of the image. I can inject the, my uh, message inside here, okay? And then I can transmit the data, okay? It's a way of uh, uh, hiding my message into a particular format, okay? Okay, next, uh, uh, these are the some terminologies you must uh, take note. Okay, encryptions mean uh, changing of original text into a secret message. Decryption meaning is opposite uh, directions, change a secret message into an original form. Clear text meaning a data in an encrypted form. Plain text meaning a clear text data to be encrypted. As you know, uh, the cryptography has been started since uh, Julius Caesar time. It's very, very uh, way back. Okay, it's not just started, it's very way back. The cryptography has been evolving. Okay, next algorithms mean uh, is a procedure based on the mathematical formula used to encrypt and decrypt the data. How about the key? Key is a mathematical value. It can be binary data or hexadata, which is entered into the cryptographic algorithm to produce a encrypted data. How about ciphertext? It's the data that has been encrypted. Okay. Okay, this is a typical uh, cryptographic process. Basically, we here I have a plain text. So the plain text is being injected or sent into the uh, this second stage, which I am going to encrypt it by using a key. Remember, a key is a, a mathematical value. It can be a decimal. It can be binary. It can be hexa, which will be injected into the original message, and then it will transform into a cipher text, which is an encrypted information. Okay. And this information is now is safe. It can send through the any transmission medium. Okay, this is my recipient. So recipient receive the encrypted information, and the recipient have to use the key to decrypt the data back. Okay, so that I, so that recipient can see the the original information. Okay, this is a cryptographic process. Okay, next. Um, Take note, uh, cryptography can provide five basic uh, information protections, which is confidentiality, which should ensure that only authorized party can be viewed, it. integrity, it ensures the information is correct and, and altered, availability, authorized user can access it, authentication, it can verify the center, non repudiation it proves that the user performed an actions. So uh, please read through this table. Uh, about the five basic uh, information protections. Okay, uh, okay next. Uh, how data is processed in the cryptography process? So basically, uh, one way is using stream cipher, which means it will take one character and replace it with, the, with other characters, something like this uh, diagram here. I can replace the A with D, B with uh, G here, okay, then I can form a letter. Okay, next type of cipher is called a block cipher. It manipulates the entire blocks of plain text at one time. So that means 
this is my plain text or I inject a key a key value it will transform into a, a cipher text okay okay this is called block cipher another one is called sponge functions which takes an input uh, a string of any length okay from this uh, input side it will take the uh, string of any any length and return a string of any requested variable length okay so let's say if my data is being uh, processed through a uh, sponge functions the data is being injected through this uh, left to left to right direction and along the way uh, there are some data called padding is added so that I can achieve a certain uh, uh, bits of encrypted data okay so after that uh, at the output side I will squeeze out I will squeeze out the unwanted data and then I'll take back the original information this is like a sponge right initially you have to put in inject the, the water example in the sponge you have inject the water after that you squeeze out at the output okay there's only three yeah one is a, a stream cipher second block cipher and sponge functions okay uh, let's talk about the uh, cryptographic algorithms uh, there are three categories take note one is using hashing or hash algor algorithms next symmetric encryption algorithm and Asymmetric encryption algorithm. Please take note of three categories. Okay, so shall we start off with the hash algorithm? What does the hash mean? Hash mean is algorithm algorithm that creates a unique digital fingerprints of data. Fingerprint mean digest. Okay, yeah, take note. Hashing is always one way. Okay, so contents cannot be used to reveal original data sets. Primary use for hashing is for comparison purpose that means when I send the data to someone I cannot uh, I'm being assured that this data is come from me this is called hashing okay so example of hashing here so example this is my data so I inject a key so come out with 408 okay so example I can disclose the hash data Although I disclose the hash, hash data, user may not know what is my original information because there can be a lot of combinations to generate 408. Am I right to say? Okay. Okay, next. In a typical hash uh, algorithm, you can make it secure by using a fixed size or unique uh, data sets or using the original data which cannot be created in the beginning or we can secure the hash by using a non-reversible way okay okay please read through about the how to secure the hash algorithm okay fix size you must be unique must be original and must be secure okay uh, let's talk about HMAC yeah? uh, this is another method of uh, hashing which is called hash message authentication code it's a hash variation providing improved security it uses a secure key process uh, processed by the sender and the receiver. Okay, it uses a key to generate the hash code. Okay, so hashing provides uh, integrities of information protections, but the rest are no. Okay. Okay, now this is a, a graphical uh, demo about hashing. Example: If I want to download a data from this particular server, and this server show me the hash code which is a uh, digest so when I downloaded the data I can check uh, after downloaded which is if I check my downloaded data is this information and the server side uh, the digest is this information and if they are matched that means the information is not altered that means no one has been injected uh, the data halfway okay it shows the authenticity of the data that I downloaded alright okay if the two informations are doesn't match, they are not matching. That means uh, the one that I downloaded the data from server is false, okay, or wrong. Okay, next, uh, there are a few common hash algorithms using message digest, secure hash uh, algorithm. Some call it SHA or SHA or Whipple and RIP EMD. Okay, um, message digest has been quite popular for uh, a, f a few decades. It uses a one-to-eight bits of hash. Okay, it 
to get this uh, one to eight bits of hash, uh, a user have or the system have to add the padding, okay, into a short message to form a one to eight bits. Uh, now the empty uh, okay message I just do or empty two is no longer secure. So people come up with empty four, but still have the flaw and not widely accepted yet. So MT5 is uh, currently uh, available and uh, still uh, popular. It uses now 512 bits. It's longer uh, 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 bits of uh, digest. Okay. So the more the number of bits, it uh, the more the safer. Okay, of hashing. Okay. So to get this mess, uh, one to five one two bits, uh, it's the same thing. The system have to add the uh, uh, padding into it. Okay. So weakness in comparison function could lead to the collisions. Okay, so take note about some weaknesses. Huh? Okay. Okay, next talk about SHA. So SHA got a uh, SHA zero to SHA three. So uh, SHA is another way of doing the hashing as well to generate the digest information. So uh, there is another uh, recent uh, cryptography hashing called Wilpu adopted by the standard organizations. It creates a hash of five one two bits. Nowadays, you see, as you see, uh, we use more and more uh, number of bits in hashing to get the secure fingerprint or digest. So next, is talk about uh, RIP EMD, Race Integrity Primitive Evaluation Message Digest. It uses two different and parallel chains of computation. Results are combined at the end of the process. Okay. Okay. Uh, these are the common uh, hash algorithms, as you see, uh, from MD2 to MD5. Okay, all the way up to the current uh, wheel pool SHA three, you see the number of bits has been increased tremendously. Okay. Okay, um, now let's talk about part two, which is a symmetric cryptographic algorithm. Okay, or SCA, which uses the same single key to encrypt and decrypt the documents or data. And like hashing, symmetric algorithms are designed to encrypt and decrypt the cipher text. That means this is two way. And data encrypted with symmetric cryptographic algorithm will be decrypted when received. Essentially, the key must be kept private or confidential. The key that used in symmetric encryption is called private key. Okay, this is how the symmetric uh, cryptography works. First, uh, there is a plain text here, so I have to use a private key from the center. Okay, and then I have to encrypt my data, become a cipher text, and I transmit the data to the recipient. So when recipient receive the data, so it will decrypt by using the same key. You see the same number amount of key, right? Same key to decrypt back the data. So I get back my original data here. Okay, this is called symmetric cryptography, it's using a private key. So symmetric cryptography will give a CIA, which is a confidential yes, integrity yes, availability yes. It gives you three layers protections. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk about a. Uh, uh, some common uh, symmetric cryptography algorithm called DES or Data Encryption Standard. It's a very pioneer. It's the first widely popular symmetric cryptography. It was produced by IBM in 1970. Okay, uh, so uh, in fact, they started off with 128 bits. Uh, uh, later on, it has been reduced to 56 bits for faster processing. Okay, and there are four modes of DES encryption exist, and they have been no longer secure. As you know, nowadays we are using uh, up to 512 bits, so 56 bits is no longer safe and secure. Okay, so what people try to achieve is that they do the triple data encryptions, so called 3DES. So what we do, they do three round of three, uh, three round of DES to become a, uh, to get a better uh, encryptions. Okay. And sometimes most secure version of 3DS uses different key for each round. So every round they use different keys for encryptions and decryptions. So it performs better in hardware than in software. So this is a three rounds of encryptions okay, using three different keys. Okay, to make it more secure, you can change the key maybe every hour or every day. Okay, so that user cannot get the key. Okay, next let's talk about AES or Advanced Encryption Standard. Which is approved as a replacement for DES. It uses 128 bits of plain text. To date, there is no attack has been successful against AES. Let's talk about RC4, uh, which is using stream cipher uh, that accept the uh, key up to 128 bits in length. IDEA, International Data Encryption Algorithm, this is using block cipher. Blowfish, uh, block cipher also. 
using 64 bits of blocks it can have a key length from 32 to 448 bits two fish okay derivation of blowfish considered to be a strong algorithm okay so please take note about how many data bits are users in their encryptions okay OTP which is widely used in the internet banking nowadays it is one time a uh, padding combine plain text with random key to generate a encrypted data it cannot be uh, mathematically uh, broken because the key has been changing time by time it does not require a use of computer it can just simply use a, a microcontroller to uh, uh, create a key and create a, a cipher text okay Lastly, let's talk about the uh, symmetric cryptographic algorithm. Okay, the weakness it will uh, it will cover the weakness of uh, symmetric algorithms. Okay, so it's better in a sense. Okay, what it does is that it distributes and maintains the secure single key among multiple users, distributed geographically. So asymmetric cryptographic uh, algorithm they uses a two key, yeah. One is public key and the other one is private key. So public key is known to everyone and private key you have to keep it yourself. Okay? This is how the private key and public key works. Okay, now the bot wants to send the data, right? The plain text. So both have to use a, a Alice public key, encrypt the data, send to the Alice. And then the Alice uses her own private key to decrypt the information and then she read the data. Okay? Take note, if you use a public key of Alice, you must use back the Alice private key. What if, if you use a Bob uh, private key here, so Alice must have the Bob public key. Okay, okay, this is how we can encrypt and decrypt the data. So they know of some principle about key pairs, okay, public key, private key, and uh, uh, the directional uh, transmissions, okay. Okay, please read through about the some principle, okay. Eh? Okay, this one I want to highlight. Document encrypted with the public key can be decrypted with decrypted with the private key. And also the document encrypted with the private key can be also decrypted with the public key. Take note about this both directional key pair. Next talk about uh, let's talk about digital signature. It's uh, another way of electro electronic uh, verifications of the sender. It prevents the sender from disowning the message and prove the message integrity. Example, if I send the data to somebody else. When someone receives and asks me, hey, Joe, do you send the data or not? I cannot, I cannot uh, disclaim it, okay? So that means uh, it's proof that I'm sending the data. Okay, this, uh, uh, this asymmetric uh, encryptions and decryptions. First, the plain text has been used. After that, uh, it's sent into the algorithm here, hash algorithm. It creates digest. After that, it uses a, a, a Bob private key to encrypt the data, become a cipher text. And this effort that has been sent together with the digital signature that when the recipient receives the text uh, cipher text with the uh, uh, digital signature here first he has to use a Bob public key because initially Bob is using his uh, private key so must use Alice must use back the Bob public key to decrypt it after that uh, Alice uses a digest to check whether the sender has been authentic or not okay so if when Alice check that it the digest is what she received is nine two nine three eight two seven here yeah, nine three two seven, so she knows hey, it's sent from Bob, so it's authentic message. So Alice will read the information. This is how the asymmetric uh, encryptions uh, cryptography works. Okay. Okay. Uh, please uh, refer to the table and then please study when and who to use the public and private key over here with the explanation. Please read through by yourself. Okay, so uh, our this asymmetric cryptography uh, protect all of the uh, five basic uh, protections, uh, CIA and AN. So asymmetric is the best among the three. Okay, so what are the three? Hashing, symmetric cryptography and asymmetric cryptography. Okay. Okay, uh, there are a few samples of asymmetric uh, cryptography. Uh, one of them is RSA. Which is published in 1977. It's made by uh, MIT. So it's the most common asymmetric uh, cryptography algorithm, which uses uh, two large prime numbers as a as a uh, public and private keys. So as you know that private uh, prime numbers are very uh, difficult to uh, to hack, okay, to crack. Oh, okay. 
Okay, next is let's talk uh, about elliptic curve cryptography (ECC), which uses a graphical uh, way of uh, uh, encryption and decryptions. It basically, it uses a uh, x y coordinates with uh, some graphical uh, representation, and it draw lines. You see, let's say example, uh, if my data is A, my data is B. Example, I can I can find out the what is a C C here. So by just drawing a line, okay, and looking at the intersections, okay, okay. Okay, next NT, uh, NTRUE encrypts uh, uses a lattice based cryptography which relies on the set of points in space which is faster than RIC and ECC which is more resistant to quantum computing attacks. Nowadays, right, uh, our hardware devices are more and more powerful so let's say if encryption is not that strong people can easily uh, decrypt or get the key in very short period of time. Okay. So, okay, this is lattice space cryptography, so meaning you can form a, a spaces of dots here, so I can draw a line, uh, or I can create a patterns of uh, encrypted information, okay? Without knowing the, the lines, that, uh, lines that I have drawn here, I have no way to uh, decrypt back my information. Okay, so that means since uh, there are a lot of so many dots, there can be multiple combinations, okay? So quantum cryptography meaning it uses the properties of microscopic objects such as photons so you know the photons are the those are the lights so it has been moving uh, okay uh, in the unpredictable direction so we choose this uh, unpredictable uh, uh, directions and then you do the encryptions okay it does not depends on the difficult mathematical problem it just uses the movement of the photons okay Okay, next let's talk about key exchange. So how can we do the key exchange? So now we're talking about public key, public key, private key. How, how do we exchange the key out of the band? We make the exchange outside the normal communication channel. So I can pass a key to the Bob or the Alice outside my communication channel. Just pass them, okay, I phone, make a phone call to them. Okay, I can provide them a key. Or in band, so which is meaning key exchange that happens within the normal communication channel. Okay, people cannot see, it's just happening during the transmission. Okay, one common in-band uh, key exchange is called uh, defi helmet which requires Ellis and bots to agree on the large prime number and related integer number. Okay. Okay, uh, okay next is a uh, defi helmet ephemera, which uses the different keys or temporary keys for uh, encryption decryptions. Okay, next, uh, elliptic curve defi helmet is a small secure it's combinations of elliptic curve and defi helmet, okay, to get the stronger encryptions, okay. And next, uh, perfect for secrecy, which uses a public key system that generate random public keys that are diffi different for each session. So every session they create a different public key, okay, which is perfect for secrecy. The value of perfect forward secrecy is that if the secret key is compromised, it cannot be revealed the contents of the more than one message. Okay. Okay. Next. So, when and where do we use cryptography? As I mentioned earlier, cryptography or en strong encryption must be used for secure information. Okay. If the data that you need to provide is no need to have so secure, no need to have a uh, strong encrypt strong uh, security, you, you just uh, ignore about those uh, multi layer uh, protections. Okay. The main concept of cryptography is to do what? Must secure the data that need to be protected. If don't need, then its normal protection is fine. Okay? So next, uh, cryptography can be applied to either software or hardware. Earlier we have mentioned it's about uh, protection through the software techniques. Okay? Uh? How about other software uh, enc uh, encryptions? Also, example, file system cryptography. Example, if you uh, have Windows operating system, it comes with some file system cryptography. Example in Windows system it uses a PGP, pretty good privacy, okay, which can uh, encrypt the our normal files and data and also the emails or Windows system. But in Linux and Unix systems we, we can use a GPG, okay, to encrypt the data. Okay, uh, Microsoft they have uh, they have uh, developed the uh, EFS, which which is uh, used in Windows system, uh, called NDFS. If your file system is using NTFS, you can uh, just simply uh, encrypt your your hard disk or data so that although somebody uh, took your hard disk and the people cannot see your information, okay? Because it's being encrypted. 
okay (uh) one example of a encryption is called bitlockers okay in those organisation we use the bitlockers to (uh) encrypt our hard drives if people don't have the bitlocker (uh) username password (uh) it's simply (uh) the attackers or hackers cannot (uh) access our information inside the hard disk so software encryption can be subject to attacks to exploit its (uh) vulnerabilities cryptography can be embedded in hardware as well if the software you think is not safe it can be applied to U_S_B devices and standard hard drive okay nowadays you know right the our U_S_B drive (uh) it come with the some en~ (uh) encrypted (uh) hardware so that mean (uh) (uh) when you co~ want to want to copy or write the data it will ask you for the username password if it's match then you can allow to write or read data if it doesn't match they will stop you from copying or read write data okay okay hard disk encryptions (uh) sometimes we call it self encryptions okay of hard disk drive which protect the file stored on them some hard hard drive they come with the hardware (uh) encryptions so that mean you can set the password or or encryptions key in the in the hard in the hard disk okay once somebody else taking taking the hard disk and if if he don't know the key or password (uh) he or she cannot read the informations because this is a protection through hardware okay okay one way of uh protections is called trusted platform module TPM sometimes we can embed a chip on the computer motherboard that provide the cryptographic service okay so which include the true random number generator on the hardware itself okay, it entirely done in the hardware okay so cannot be subject to the software attacks okay it prevent the computer from booting if file or data has been altered okay or prompt for password if hard drive moved to the new computer okay this is mainly a uh, uh system on chip system on on chip protections okay okay next is, is about hsm uh hardware encryption method hardware security module which is a secure cryptography processor that mean user or a, a hardware maker or manufacturer they can add the processor inside the uh, a cpu or uh, any any uh electronic devices mainly for uh creating a cryptographic uh generations okay it can be on board key generator and key storage facilities okay a processor that can store the key as well and also generate the key also okay this is a processor okay it performs accelerated asymmetric and symmetric uh, asymmetric encryptions okay so it's a processor is is quite powerful okay you can provide services to multiple devices over a, a LAN. okay okay Okay, I think this is the end of my uh, slide for chapter 5 and the rest are the, uh, the summary here which I have also shown on the right hand side my summary for the chapter 5 Okay, I hope you enjoyed my video and I wish you all the best with your coming exams See you next time, thank you